So, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Antoine Leiter, and uh, we will now start our webinar about uh, how to post-process and visualize telemac data within TechPlot. Um, so, the webinar will be recorded, and you will be able to access the, uh, the recording online. So, uh, for today's summary, we'll speak about a uh, brief introduction about Genius Graphics. Um, then we will uh, present how to uh, link TechPlot to telemac. That is basically how to install the Telemac data loader within TechPlot. Um, and then I will present uh, TechPlot 360 EX 2015 and uh, what you can do within uh, your uh, Telemac data uh, from TechPlot. So, um, okay. So from Genius Graphics, so we are a TechPlot uh, exclusive distributor within Europe. We are providing solutions to analyze and visualize scientific data. And we have approximately 1,000 rockets. 300 sorry, organizations that are using TechPlot in Europe. We have more than 20 years of experience in doing so, and we are based in Regensburg in Germany. We are doing training, consulting, and software development. Okay, uh, so how to load your data, uh, your telemac data within TechPlot? Uh, you need to install an add-on, which is, uh, well, you can find it either on the telemac forum or uh, the source code is distributed within telemac in uh, that territory here. Uh, telemax rules slash bin add-on techpad add uh, I will show you briefly how to install the add-on. So um, the add-on is a DLL, so it's a dynamic link library uh, little file. So you will just need to go to your techpad installation uh, directory. Here it is. And in that directory, you would uh, find that techpad.add uh, ASCII file here. And by opening it, so we'll just color it a bit. Um, as you can see, you can decide to load an add-on uh, really easily. So what you will you would do is basically um, enter those lines here, load add-on, and here you would enter the name of the uh, telemac add-on. So um, basically, the name of the uh, data file. Okay, and here it is. Uh, then you need to put the binary uh, in that binary folder. Sorry, uh, that Sarah. Uh, so you need to put the DLL here, which is called Sarah. Okay. Uh, actually, I was not in the right directory, so here it is. And here you would find a Sarah.dll. Okay. So that's all you need to do. And uh, after restarting TechPlot, you would just find uh, the Telemac data loader directly within um, the list of loaders. So here it is. We'll just. So now I will present you a um, a data set that is uh, that. Dam uh, from Melpaste Dam uh, in France, and uh, as you can see, so in TechPlot you can do uh, 3D animation with uh, moving frame, for example. But you can have many frames, such as a 3D overview here, or a uh, 2D uh, top view, which is uh, from a Telemac 2D uh, result here. And you can also extract data over time uh, at a given point. So we'll just show you how to perform that kind of post-processing for Telemac. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so within TechPlot, you will just start from scratch, open a Telemac uh, file. So I choose the Telemac data loader, and here I will just uh, take the Telemac result file. Um, here I will uh, load my SLF uh, result 3D of uh, my passé. And by clicking open, as you can see, it's uh, being loaded within TechPlot. So uh, what is new in TechPlot 360X, uh, you can know right-click zones, and you can access through that uh, context-sensitive menu uh, basic visualization means, such as displaying a mesh, a contour, vector, a shading. So for example, here I'm applying a shading, and you can see the geometry. And uh, you can have the mesh, for example, and so on. Now, by clicking the little uh, black arrow here, you can decide, um, for example, here, my contour, I wish to have it uh, according to different um, uh, contour details, and so on. So here I will just uh, change a bit the shading color, for example. And here it is. Okay. So uh, this is a transient case, as you can see. And uh, we will start just by defining or telling TechPlot what variables are to be used um, as a convective uh, vector. So here I will just specify velocity. And I will enter my three velocity components that are UV and W. Clicking OK. Here it is. So now I'm able in that analyze menu to calculate new variables uh, that are based on that uh, convective 
uh, vector. So I will just, for example, compute here my velocity magnitude. And if you have big data set, you can uh, toggle that calculate and even un. That basically allows TechPlot to compute the velocity magnitude in that case for, um, well, every time you need it. Uh, here, the data set is not that big, so I will just calculate it for every node and every time step. As you can see, TechPlot is computing right now. And uh, here I got a little information from minimum and maximum values of a uh, main velocity magnitude. Okay. So now in my control details, as you can see, I have a new variable that is velocity magnitude, and I will just select it. Uh, another thing is that now in 360X, you can load a uh, color map. So I will just import a color map here. They call telemac color map. Here it is. And uh, I called it, um, well, it's not really original, but I called it river. Here it is. Um, so now I have my contour that is defined here, and by right-clicking my zone here, I can just decide to um, display a velocity magnitude contour. So um, I will just go further time, in time a bit, and as you can see, um, so the dam already broke and the water is uh, flowing down the, the valley here. Um, I don't want to have contour here where my uh, velocity magnitude is slow, is low, sorry. So we'll uh, cut off just my control below, um, let's say 0 0.5, for example. And uh, here, as you can see, I just have the shading where the uh, velocity magnitude is less than 0 0.5. OK. <coughs> so um, in TechPlot, you can work with uh, many frames, as you may know. And uh, here, what we will do, we will just uh, probe somewhere. So uh, let's say you are interested in a point and to have the field values against time in that given point. So We'll just use the tool probe to create time service plot. And we'll click somewhere like here. And now TechPlot is extracting my field values at that given point a long time. So um, that allows you to compare live um, both aspects. And uh, here it is. So a new frame is automatically created here. And as you can see, I've got velocity magnitude against uh, solution time. And the time slider here is just to tell me what uh, time step I am looking at in that big frame in the middle here. So in the mapping style, I will just display um, another uh, variable, for example. So let me just maximize it a bit. OK. Um, let's say, for example, dynamic pressure. So I'll just turn that on. And as you can see, uh, the scales here are very different. So we'll just assign it on my second uh, axis, which is Y in the case. So those two frames are already linked in time, means uh, if you play the movie in the in the big frame here, or the 3D frame, uh, you will see the, um, the time slider updated directly within that uh, XY lane cut. OK. <coughs> so um, still with frames, you can create another uh, frame here, for example. And uh, I will just tile my frames, so I will have them, uh, for example, one over the other. Here it is. So just kind of keep it as an overview. And here in the bottom frame, I will just, um, so in each frame, you can load different data sets. Uh, that's also possible. So here, once again, I will just select my Telemac data loader, choose Telemac result files, and uh, I will load the 2D case of, um, of my MELP asset simulation. Here it is. And uh, as you can see here, I have the top view. So it's a 2D calculation. And once again, you can right click things. And here, for example, I will have uh, the water height. So here I am not looking currently at uh, the same time steps. So in the uh, frame frame linking menu, you can basically uh, link your frames in solution time by clicking apply self things to all frames of this group. As you can see here, I have the updated solution time. And if I am playing, I am playing the movie in both. So updating all of my three frames. Um, so I'm looking at the exact same time steps in those frames. <coughs> OK. Um, in TechPlot, you can work with many frames, but you can also work with many pages. So um, first thing is that it's, uh, you can copy frames just by pressing Control C, and you can paste it, for example, in, um, in any uh, Microsoft Office um, uh, applications, such as uh, PowerPoint or Word. Uh, that's very convenient if you don't need a big, um, a big resolution. You can just uh, do it very quickly for your presentation. 
what you can do also, you can copy a uh, frame and paste it directly within TechPad. So here I will just add a new page and I will paste my frame. So we'll delete the original frame, which was blank. And here is my, um, my frame that has been copied and pasted. Okay. So, um, now we'll get interested in slices and how to, um, to perform calculation in slices and, uh, that kind of things. So I will just, uh, once again, paste my frame here. So now I've got twice uh, the same frame. I will just type them it's going to be cleaner, let's say. Okay. So here I have two frames. Uh, I will link them now in uh, different ways. So in solution time, but also in 3D plot view and in slice positions. Here it is. And uh, in the bottom frame here, I will not show either the contour or the um, shading. So I just have that bounding box here. And uh, as you can see, well, um, it's currently blank. But uh, what we will do, we'll just turn and places here. And we will define, the, for example, a X slice. And we will decide to show uh, the mesh on the slice or the edge. Here, we just take the mesh so we can visualize it. So we'll just turn slice here on. And uh, here I will do the exact same thing. So um, actually, I should have copied and pasted it later, and so we'll just redo it. Sorry, wrong manipulation that happened. <laughs> so um, here I copy my frame, and here I paste it. Here it is. Okay. So now if I don't show my uh, contour and uh, shading, as you can see here, I have the, um, my slice. And you can actually uh, see what is in your slice. So we'll just turn in, um, this time not the mesh, but uh, for example, the edges. So here you've got the, the actual um, profile of your slice. And uh, if you move a slice here in the top frame, you'll get it updated in the bottom frame. Uh, TechPlot 360X allows you to uh, animate slices. So if you click on the slice details here, uh, you can just animate. And let's say I want, uh, I don't know, 50 slices from my, from the very top to the very bottom of my simulation. Well, you can just click play and you will actually um, animate your slices. So from the top of your simulation to the bottom, and you will see uh, all of the uh, profiles along that, uh, that thing. Okay. Um, you can also define many slices, so that's also possible. And uh, you can have them, so for example, here you show a start and end slice and intermediate slices. So I don't know if I want five, seven slices, eight slices. Here they are. So you can basically extract very easily um, some uh, profiles along your uh, simulation. Okay. Um, so I will now take a third page. <laughs> And uh, once again, copy and paste my frame here. So that's still my 3D uh, data. And uh, what I will do now is uh, I will perform some calculation along a, um, along a cut. So from a, from a slice, basically. Um, so what I do here, I basically put a slice, let's say here, for example. And now I will extract my slice over time. So in the data extract, extract slices over time option. Uh, you just click it, and as you can see, TechPad is looping over time, and uh, it's basically extracting for each time step a zone that correspond to my slice. Um, so it takes a bit of time, as I have a lot of time steps here. I think we've got 250. Here it is. And uh, now in my zone style, as you can see, I have a new zone that is uh, my slice uh, that allows us to perform calculations on the slice. So, um, for example, here I will just set few fluid properties, such as um, having an uh, incompressible uh, fluid here. So I'll just put the identity of, um, well, one metric ton per uh, cubic meter. And uh, <coughs> and now I'm able to perform an integration. So uh, what I will do through that slice, I will integrate my uh, mass flow rate, integrate it over time. And uh, I will select my slices. So I want to integrate it through my slice. I plot my result as um, mass flow rate, MFR, for example. And by clicking integrate, TechPad is integrating the value over time. Okay. So here I have my uh, results. 
And as you can see, it's uh, zero until a uh, given time step. And then I have the, the actual mass flow rate through my slice here. So it's been plotted as well. And uh, once again, so I'm going to show symbols here. It's a bit cleaner. And uh, once again, you can, uh, you can play your movie from, uh, so your frames are linked in time. And if you play the movie, as you can see, when the wave arrived to the slice here, uh, you actually see the, um, well, the mass flow rate through that slice uh, being updated then. Okay. All right. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I will now um, tell you how you could find help uh, regarding TechPlot and Telemax. So um, from the Telemax site, uh, you can just go on the Telemax Masquerade website, uh, opentelemax.org, and you will find there a forum where you can ask questions. Uh, from the TechPlot uh, site, so there is our website, w, 3w, sorry, the TechPlot.de. Uh, we are also on Google Plus or um, directly on LinkedIn, you can find me as well. Um, another thing I wanted to speak about is uh, we are going to give a Telemac training uh, in partnership with uh, UHM. So the person to contact is uh, Uwe Merkel, and it's in uh, Karlsruhe in Germany, but uh, other location will follow. Uh, we currently have three dates uh, approximately planned, so it's going to be around January, February, and May 2016. And there is different levels from basic to advanced features uh, training. Trainings can be given uh, either in English or German languages. And uh, do not hesitate to contact us for more information. So um, thank you very much. Uh, you can write me for any question. You may have an email at uh, antoine.lager at geniuscoregraphics.de. Thank you. Uh, I will stay online.